school football 1997. Another season to remember. With lofty goals, Ray Hench's Crusaders opened two-a-day practices in August. With memories of a perfect 1996 10-0 regular season, a district championship, and a trip to the state playoffs. One week before opening the season, Elias joined three other teams at a first-ever preseason jamboree, taking the place of the blue and gold scrimmage. Good preparation for the opener. Once again, Elias would open with perhaps the toughest test on the schedule against Camdenton. The two teams split last season, Elias winning the first but losing the last in the playoffs. Both of those games were in Camdenton. This year, they moved to Jefferson City. I think you always get the jitters. You got a lot of questions. You know, I think the Jamboree helped us answer some of the questions the other night, but you still, you know, you're still not for real. That was a practice the other night, and uh, uh, Friday night is for real, and uh, it, we're all a little bit nervous about it. I think uh, if you don't, then you're not a human being. Could be probably our toughest game of the year. He's got a lot of good kids back. Uh, we feel like we got a lot of good kids back. We got him on home turf, hopefully both times this year. If we meet him in the quarterfinals as we did last year, uh, we're just very optimistic uh, about the season. Friday night, September 5th, opening night of the high school football season, and no better matchup in the state than Elias Camdenson. All defense in the first half. Crusader Ryan Lott in on the sack. Elias quarterback Nathan Hogg found Locke on this nice pass play, but neither team would score until the fourth quarter. Let's go! Just over eight minutes left in the game. This Camdenton field goal gave the Lakers a 3-0 lead. Starting on their own 33, Elias put together the game-winning drive. Fullback John Slicker carried four straight times into Camdenton territory. Then Stuart Henches broke free on this 35-yard touchdown run. The Crusaders' first points of the season were huge. Elias held on for the 7-3 opening night victory. The Crusaders 1-0 heading to Kansas City O'Hara for a Saturday afternoon contest the following weekend. In Kansas City, the Helias offense rolled up some big numbers, at least in yardage. 332 yards on the ground, 22 first downs, but some other key stats kept the scoreboard numbers down. Four lost fumbles, two interceptions. The state's fourth-ranked Crusaders moved the ball all afternoon against the O'Hara Celtics. Stuart Henches finishing with 173 yards on 23 carries. That helped set up this Nathan Hogg one-yard dive in the second quarter. Elias added a late Steve Tonkin touchdown in the fourth to beat O'Hara 13-3. Another strong effort by the Elias defense. Well, our offense hasn't got on track yet, but our defense has played well, and two wins are two wins, and hopefully that we can get our offense on track this week. You want offense? Stick around. Over the next three weeks, Helias put up bigger numbers than any other football team in Missouri. Starting here in Springfield, Stuart Henches goes in, then Steve Tonkin, then Nathan Hogg to Ryan Locke for a third touchdown, all of this in the first quarter. Parkview finally stopped Helias here in the second, sort of. Crusader kicker Mason Williams added the 34-yard field goal. Then back to touchdowns. Hogg on the keeper from 15 yards out, Nine touchdowns on the night for Helias. Wilson, Keith, Weaver, Beffa, and Lukanoff all found the end zone. Helias pounded Parkview 63-0. The fireworks had just begun heading to Fulton. We've had our matches over the year, but uh, quite frankly, they haven't been all that competitive here late. And, you know, to keep a rivalry going, you know, both sides have to win occasionally. And, uh, Hopefully that, uh, you know, that doesn't materialize. The only thing that did materialize, a Helias High School record performance in Fulton. The Crusaders, nine touchdowns in the first half alone, everything bouncing right. Matt Rackers ran in from six yards out. Stuart Henches then ran in a couple first quarter TDs. This, a 35-yard jaunt that made it 21 to nothing. Helias was just the beginning. Rackers with just under 100 yards on seven carries, carried in his second touchdown early in the second quarter. Even the 
the Lions defense added to the scoreboard. Chris Wilson, a big interception return here, gave Elias a 63-0 lead at halftime, rolling on to the 75-7 win over Fulton, the most points ever scored in a single game in Elias history. And for the second straight week, the starters only played the first half. It didn't stop there. Back home the following week, the Crusaders crushed Kirksville. 22 offensive plays in the first half, resulting in nine more touchdowns. Stephen Tonkin opened the latest barrage with this 57-yard TD run. After a hog to lock pass, Stuart Henches scampered 49 yards, 59 to nothing at halftime. Elias went on to clobber Kirksville 65 zip, a three game total of 203 to seven. They're kind of getting upset at us because they want us to make the games a little more exciting. They're saying, well, we're going to have to leave after halftime because you guys aren't playing anymore. Well, I'd say we're kind of getting bored. You know, we're looking to play a tough, tough team like Rockbridge, so uh, it'd be a little different, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, I've never had three games in my life quite like these past three. Uh, again, what is the caliber of our competition? Uh, how good are we? Uh, we still don't really have the answer to that. Uh, hopefully this week against Rockbridge, uh, we'll have some answers. It was a battle at the bridge, at least for a while. On the road in Columbia, the final meeting between Ray Henches and retiring Bruins head coach John Hennage. Two early Rockbridge touchdowns put the Bruins up 14 to nothing. Would this be the end of the undefeated regular season for Elias? The Crusaders answered that question in a hurry. Early in the second quarter, big play by the Sater special teams. Derek Lukanoff blocked this Rockbridge punt. Ben Bish recovered in the end zone. Touchdown, Elias. Nathan Hogg carried in the two-point conversion. It was 14 to eight. After a slow start, the Halaya's offense returned to form. Look at Stuart Henches in for the tying touchdown after the great cutback. It was 14-14. Halaya's would take its first lead on the night with this two-point conversion. Hog to the air, hitting Ryan Lock. And later in the first half, the same two connected on this long touchdown pass. Hog to Lock. Going for two again, the Crusader quarterback made it 24-14 Helias at the half. The Crusaders went to the locker room with that 10-point lead and went on to win by 17, 38-21, an impressive victory over rival Rockbridge. You know, this is a unique group of kids. I don't think uh, there's going to be a letdown. They, they know what they have to do to win, and uh, they've been good for six games. Let's hope it carries on for at least four more in the regular season. Crusaders carried on against Marshall in week number seven of the high school football season. Stuart Henches scampered in from 15. Elias jumped on top of the Owls and never looked back. More Crusader defense, a punishing hit by Troy Sanbody. Elias kept the Owls off the scoreboard while racking up 50 points of their own. Henches in again as Helias eased on to a 50 to nothing victory. Now 7-0 on the season heading into district play. Another football Saturday for Helias High. The state's third-ranked undefeated Crusaders celebrate homecoming, hosting Mexico tomorrow night. And the Saders have already been doing a lot of celebrating this season with seven straight Ws. Helias should make it eight against the one and six Mexico Bulldogs. We haven't let the distractions of homecoming for building that stuff. We encourage them to get involved in those activities, but you know their main focus is hopefully is on the football game. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going during the week. You can lose track of what's real important, but I think we're focused and we know what to do and win the game. We're pretty excited. I mean, it's no different than any other game. We're going to stay at the same intensity level we've been playing all year. A messy night of football against Mexico. Despite the steady rain and heavy winds, the Helias offense still managed to rack up 377 yards and another blowout victory. Matt Rackers, 14-yard touchdown run was the only scoring in the first period. The teams combined, though, to fumble 16 times on the sloppy evening, 10 by Mexico. Elias went on to bury the Bulldogs 42 to nothing. Another shutout for the Elias defense. Crusaders moving to 8-0 on the season, ranked number three in the state poll. Next up, ninth-ranked Hannibal. People who compare scores seem to think that we should have an easy time now because we've beaten everybody worse than they have. But you can throw that out. District championship, conference championships on the line. 
kind of crucial, and I don't know, it's just the way it works. You can win all of the games, and, and, and you can get into district play, and, and it could be all for nine, and just be nothing. So yeah, it's crossed our minds, and we just got to stay focused. So this is a very important game to us and our fans and everybody here at Halas. With the conference title and basically the district title on the line, Elias played host to Hannibal. Good teams capitalize on opponents' mistakes, and that's exactly what Elias did on this night. Starting with this fumbled punt return, Crusader Joey Bringer recovered at the five-yard line. John Slicker carried in from there. At a two-point conversion, it was eight to nothing. Elias kept Hannibal off the board thanks to more solid defense and Chad Castleman's foot. The Crusader punter averaged nearly 40 yards on four boots. Elias added a Hench's second quarter touchdown run to give the Satyrs a 14-0 lead at the break. Elias struck for three third quarter touchdowns. Hog to the air to lock on the 11 yard connection. Just over a minute later, Slicker ran in from 30 yards. Hench's would add the final touchdown run as Helias went on to sink the Pirates 35-0, a game that many thought might be close. Elias now 9-0, heading into the final game of the regular season at Moberly. It's nice to be ranked and be noticed, but right now it doesn't really matter. You still have to win your games. It's good and it's nice to be recognized, but rankings are mostly for our fans. It'd be nice just to go ahead on and go to state. A chance to wrap up a second straight undefeated regular season and most importantly, a district championship. Elias met Moberly. First possession of the game, Elias marched 78 yards. Matt Rackers accounting for 48 on that jaunt. Rackers ending up with 144 yards on the night on just eight carries. Henches carried in the first touchdown, a 15-yard run. It was seven to nothing. Elias hammered the Spartans 42-0, finishing the season a perfect 10-0, claiming the district championship and the North Central Missouri Conference title and a trip to the state playoffs facing McClure North in St. Louis the following Wednesday night. You know, if the St. Louis paper uh, is right, they feel that they are the number two team in St. Louis. Some people think they're the best team in St. Louis since they only lost a two-pointer to Pattonville, who's been number one in 5A all along. So we're going to have to have our game face on. The Crusader faithful followed their team as they had all season long. But this road trip to St. Louis didn't end like the 10 games before. Elias would fall to the stars of McClure North. The Crusader offense, which averaged 43 points, 370 yards a contest, could do little against the stars' defense. Elias ended 1997 losing 20 to nothing. Finishing a season that wouldn't soon be forgotten. A year filled with huge blowout victories, school record numbers, and a perfect 10-0 regular season. First game of the season beating Camden, who we beat once last year, then they beat us, and that was kind of like, more like revenge or something, and then we beat them, and then I guess Rockbridge game, going being down 14-0, or however bad, and then coming back and beating them. And then Hannibal, which everybody thought might beat us, and then it was kind of like tough little first drive, and then we'd go back and beat them like 35 to nothing or something, so. I'll, I remember, uh, I guess, just everything about the whole season. Um, it was just wonderful getting together, being undefeated like that, um, just flat killing everybody, you know. I mean, um, that was great. I don't remember if it was this year or not, um, but I remember one time the whole line, we were on, uh, we were on the driving sled, and we were on the track on the side, and Coach Jeffers was upset with everyone. He was yelling and screaming, and um, he forgot to get some other coaches on there, and uh, he just got us all pumped up, and he said, go, and everyone just hit the sled and hit him, and he was off balance, and he just started flying backwards, and he started backpedaling, did like three somersaults, and everyone just stood there, didn't know what to laugh, and then he got up and he goes, oh, that should have been on America's Funniest Home Videos, and everyone just started laughing and rolling on the ground. It was, it was great. I like to kill everybody, beating them bad. I mean, after the second game, I thought well, we had a like, close game there. And then everybody got together and s started winning. It was start scoring some points. Uh, it was a really exciting season, both years. Since we've been starting, we went undefeated. This both years have been pretty disappointing, though. Not reaching the final goal, though. Yeah, it was a good year. Uh, it was my first year out, so it was, it was kind of special to me. I mean, it was just, I didn't really know 
how it was until I was actually in there, so it was good. The whole season was, I mean, anything you could think you'd want, you know? You went undefeated, you beat everybody until, you know, in the big game, and then just, you lose, so move on. The whole season as a whole was real great, you know, you can't really single out, but one game in particular I, I really liked was the Rockridge game. We were down at halftime, you know, and they were beating us, and we came back, and we won, and they were a good team. And, but other than that, the whole season was great. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard because most people, like, they come to the game, they expect, you know, kind of a close game. They want to, you know, see that, that, that neck and neck all through the end. And then when you come and, you know, you blow out teams 71, you know, just 69 to nothing and 75 to nothing, it's, uh, it gets kind of, but, you know, they like it. You know, they like the winning. It's pretty good, but the whole season was great. So. Well, my best memory is probably the opening game against Camden. We beat Camden after they knocked us out of the playoffs last year. That was a nice win. Probably the last game against McClure North, since that was our last game we'll ever play here at Hawaii. It was hard fought and came out that we lost, but it was fun. The Parkview game, opening kickoff, we get the ball back on first play, we score. That really kind of set the tone, I guess, for the rest of the season there. Kind of culminated, I guess, with the game against Fulton, you know, 75 points. Yeah, it was a good year. I sat out my junior year, so um, coming back from my senior year and going undefeated in the regular season was, it was just a blast. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's got to be one of the best teams I've ever played for. I've played for public school teams, and I think about the guys around here, they're just, they're the greatest. Yeah, it was a pretty fun year, and, uh, you know, I thought the unity was pretty good, and not much you could say, you know, on the end, but I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun going all the games and watching all my friends whoop up on some guys. It's a lot of fun. Coach Jeffries always said when people come on the sidelines, they're like running out of bounds. Make sure you stop them. Well, all my friends decided to jump out of the way, and I was the only one standing there and Stuart Hitchens took me out. So I took the fall and pad him pretty good. So I, was, I, was, I wasn't sore until the next day. My chest kind of hurt. His face messed up right in it. But I was all right. Uh, I think the first game against Camden, uh, the, the, we kicked it off pretty deep, and it went over the guy's head, and nobody picked it up. And I dove down, and, I, and there was a big scramble for the ball, and I came up with the ball, and I was just excited about it. Yes. Oh, I'd say the 10 0 season, definitely regular season, was great. And also uh, breaking the school record most points in a year in a game. Probably the highlights of the season, I believe. Yeah, it was a pretty good year. I mean, we'd like to go farther, but I mean, 10 0 season was pretty good. And I mean, it was fun when I was going. Very great year. I had a lot of fun. Uh, went undefeated in the regular season. Uh, I had a lot of good games, a lot of blowouts. Those are the fun things about it. Always, I played uh, some first unit defense. It's always fun getting to play second unit offense after you played defense. Since then, you get a little bit of touchdown action, you know. I think the most thing that I enjoy with the guys is like just being with them. And we've been together for four years, and we kind of expected big things. I mean, we had good season, like through the regular season, and just didn't work out in the postseason. But <clears throat> I mean, it was all the memories and stuff. I think are the best part. Overall, I think it was a it was a great worthwhile season up until the McClure game. It was it was a heck of a season, but you can't dawn on the last game. You gotta look at the positives that went on through the through the whole length of the season. But overall, it was it was very worthwhile. I think dedication and like working hard and I guess like just friendships and stuff. And like everybody's like in a bond and stuff that you, not just one person can like win it, win something. It has to be a team. Learning to work together with people. Um, you know, you can't you can't be a good team unless you can work together with people. And everyone together, in a hard work and dedication, and going for a cause, and uh, you know, learning not to give up and never give up. Especially like at Rockbridge, we were down and. We, we could have just quit, but we didn't roll over. You know, if you don't quit, good things can happen, and we proved that. Well, you learn that if you work hard enough, you can achieve anything, and I mean, you know, be successful, and, and that's the same as football, wrestling, or any 
any aspect of life, you know. Learn to, to, to adapt and play and work with everybody around you and basically just go on with what you have. We learned a lot this year. We learned about winning, a lot about winning. We also learned about losing, a big game. And uh, it was kind of hard at the end, but uh, you know, you just got to grin and bear it. We had a great season. Every, I mean, we had much support from everybody, cheerleaders, parents, coaches, everybody. The whole community was great. And it was, it's been like that for the last two years. And you know, it's kind of, we wanted to win the state championship these last years, you know, we, we, you know, all year round. And you know, we trained hard in the off season, we worked hard, and we wanted to reach our final goal of a state championship. We tried to do that for our parents and everybody who supported us. And uh, it was kind of hard coming up short the last two years, but that's part of life. So you got to take it. You got to move on. Uh, just hard work, dedication. We had everybody worked hard all year and in the summer, lifting weights, and we all worked a lot, real hard, and I'll just take that out of it. Going through practices and that, we learn discipline and everything like that, and help us in whatever career we go to. A lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, uh, effort. If you um, start something, you should finish it, give it your all. Well, to never give up, because you don't know what you can accomplish if you don't give it 100%. Dedication, hard work, and everything will get you anywhere you want to be. That's probably about the best thing I can think of. The thing I think I'll take most would be uh, the discipline. It, it sports is a good thing because it helps you get through life. You know, you learn, you know, what you need to do and what you have to do, all, most of the time. You know, the discipline you have to have to practice every day and games, and just have to be fundamentals. I guess I would say that help you, teamwork. Yeah, the coaches definitely, they taught me so much, a whole lot. Uh, the discipline at practice every day, everyone was in it together. There was no I or anything, it was all team. It was great, good unity. I think probably discipline and to know that you can do things. Because I mean, sometimes you have lack confidence and stuff, and I think they do a good job with that. And they, they let you work to your potential. I mean, they're not saying, well, you're senior, you know, you start, or you have to earn what you do. So that's a good thing. I'd say mostly uh, self-confidence and self-esteem. Because whenever we did something right, there was, there, was always a, there was always a high five or a good job waiting after it. And I'd also take out discipline. So coaches got you ready for the next game and probably get us ready for what else takes place in life.